Hello and welcome back to a new video. Before we start, I want to remind you about hitting the subscribe button. Today we will analyze the technical solutions of the outstanding Finnish classic specialist Ivo Niskanen in the technique called diagonal stride. Before we start the analysis, it's important to understand a big part of the explanation of why these elite athletes are able to perform this well is due to the sky-high aerobic capacity they possess. So just because you're able to move with equivalent technique doesn't mean you will go as fast if you're lacking the power to back it up. And like I said in the previous videos, it's important to understand the speed being a product of the cadence and the distance you're able to move every stroke. In general, will the difference between a classic skier at super high level versus a skier at lower level not come through a significant difference in the cadence, but rather the length? So just to answer it right away, why are Ivo Niskanen and Alexander Bolshinov so much faster than the rest? The answer is complex, but at the same time relatively simple. They're able to transport their bodies a further distance every single repetition. The number of centimeters covered per stroke or per stride is significantly higher than the rest, and that's what elevates them from the pack. They manage to do this because of a mix between capacity and technical abilities, but in this video we will only focus on the latter. Detail number one. Extension of the legs. At certain points of the race, one can notice Evo stretching out the movements to a quite significant extent, especially when the speed is lower to moderate. This is very similar to Bolshinov, and one thing they have in common that's very different from all the Norwegian guys, who have much higher cadence and are almost outrunning on the skis. In fact, in the 80s and 90s, they used to move with a much larger range of motion, while the trend during the last 40 years has been to focus on a higher cadence. However, the two best guys are at times moving in a way that could remind you about the old school style of skiing, even though it's not quite the same as Mieto and those guys. Bolshunov and Niskanen aren't always using this large range of motion, but at certain speeds, for example in slide uphill, they possess this ability of being able to really extend the motions. Notice in these clips how much longer stride Sansanish has in comparison to Johannes, and look how correspondingly large the difference is from him to Shurota. Niskanen has also got this ability, although he only uses it in certain parts of the tracks. This could be related to just a habit of extending the legs or not, but the ability to perform this kind of technique can in some cases also be limited by a lack of mobility, especially in the hips and the quads. If you have too tight quads and hip flexors, it will simply be physically impossible to move like Niskanen in the diagonal stride. If you really care about your performance, you might need to consider implementing some mobility work as a daily or at least weekly routine to make sure tightness in the critical muscles and tendons will not be a limitation for your technical arsenal. Both Niskanen and Bolshunov have sufficient flexibility in the quads and hips. They have also a very solid and strong core that contributes to better overall stability. Strength training is also very important to be able to sustain a stable technique for long durations. The point is, trying to move in a super efficient way will be impossible if there are certain holes in your game when it comes to overall muscular strength, stability, and mobility, even though focusing on technique itself is of course the most important aspect. One thing Niskanen also does, often at relatively low speed and gentle uphill, is to lift the feet quite high up in the air. I'm not entirely sure exactly what he gets in return doing it, but it can be mentioned. Do you have any ideas of why he lifts the feet so high? You're welcome to express your opinions in the comment section down below. Balance and weight transfer. Even more important than sufficient mobility is a well-developed balance. When I'm saying balance, I'm not talking about how skilled you are at a balance board, but to what degree you're able to stand comfortably with more weight over the skis. Supplementing with balance exercises is of course beneficial, but the real and critical kind of balance is the specific balance on the skis and that's impossible to replicate in any other way. The most effective way to improve this is to use the old school method of skiing without your poles. Doing this during sessions, for example, 20 minutes now and then, will significantly help fixing the weaknesses in your classic technique. If performed correctly, this kind of work is damn effective when it comes to development of the classic technique, and I simply can't understand why it isn't used more among skiers across all levels. Niskanen has an exceptional balance and weight transfer, and this is one of the reasons why he is able to move so efficiently. By the way, there is video material of both Bolshunov and Niskanen skiing without their poles on the internet, 
and this is something you should start doing immediately if you have ambitions in classic style. Next, variation and frequency. Even though Niskanen at times is extending the range of motion, he isn't always doing it. In steeper uphills, you can also see him with a more running-like kind of technique and significantly higher cadence, but it's just without the high lifting of the feet like Claybo. It's more like he's running on the skis almost identical to what you do in moose running during fall. When he's doing the diagonal stride with a large range of motion at lower speeds, he is often lifting the feet high, but when he is running more on the skis, he lifts the feet less. The opposite of Claybo's solutions, so as you can see, there are many different ways which all can be effective, and you need to find the way that fits you the best. Niskanen shifts between high and low cadence, and this kind of variation in frequency might also be beneficial, because the body gets sort of a break from the same and constant movements. Another important detail is to look forward rather than too much down. Niskanen is very good at looking straight ahead in the tracks, and having the head in a relatively upright position. Even though he has a certain forward lean of the upper body, his neck isn't very crouched or hook-like. Having bad posture with a crooked neck will cause a lot of sub-optimal positions through the whole body, and potentially obstruct both blood flow and optimal breathing or ventilation, so it's important to keep the head up and look forward in the tracks. If you have extremely tight and limited neck traps and chest muscles that pull the head forward, trying to fix it through certain exercises will be beneficial for your posture and therefore your classic technique. When Evo is at his best, he is able to move with relaxed and low shoulders. However, you can also see him struggle with this particular detail in certain situations, and especially when he's not in peak form. Relaxed shoulders are something you should aim for in the diagonal stride. I have talked about the importance of having long enough poles in some earlier videos, but in the classic diagonal, however, it's actually the complete opposite. To be able to really master this technique, it's essential to not have too long poles. This detail can completely ruin your classic efficiency. What's an ideal pole length? Double poling is different, but when it comes to the diagonal stride in isolation, 83 to 84% of your height measured without shoes might be an optimal range. Arm and elbow position. Viewed from the front, you can notice the arms being not super narrow, but certainly not wide either. It looks like they're at moderate width, and if anything, I'd classify this as closer to narrow than wide arms. From the side, you can see the arms being not super stretched out, but not super tight either. It looks to be the golden mean road, and in many different scenarios, also when it comes to skiing technique, the golden mean road might be what you should be aiming for. When he is putting the poles into the snow, they're sometimes almost vertical, and he also avoids planting them into the snow with a too large distance between each other. At times, Evo has also a marginal drop movement of the poles, which means he doesn't hold tightly to the poles with tense hand movements, but occasionally lets go of the poles, and when he does, it's only slightly noticeable. He also extends the arms a little further behind the body than a few others. Angle of the knees. Niskanen doesn't have a deep positioning of the legs in diagonal. The definition of a bent leg was explained in the previous video, and Claybo is known for this, at least in skating. Niskanen's legs are relatively straight, and this might be cost-efficient over long distances. He's also not trying to extend the feet too much forward during each stride, like the way Polteranen and also some old-school skiers used to do. If the calves and feet are moving too much forward, it will, according to many skiing coaches, probably lead to poor efficiency, because the force won't travel directly through the body and into the snow. At the same time, this forward push of the calves might lead to a longer distance covered per stride, but it's hard to say for sure what's the best. Having a marginal forward motion with the feet might be beneficial, but if the calves are too extended and too much forward in comparison to the center of the body, I do believe it'll be ineffective. Timing, rhythm, and upper body movements. Niskanen has an excellent rhythm and timing. It looks very even without any remarkable stops in the motions. He manages to avoid falling too much backwards with the hips, and he avoids a so-called late kick. The hips are pushed forward and it looks kind of majestic. Viewed from the front, he also looks even and symmetrical. It looks like he's very stable without any twisting from side to side and without much up and down movements. If the upper body should go up and down or be more motionless and stable while doing the diagonal stride has been discussed for years, the instigators of up and down movements claim it will help with the grip on the skis in the uphills because of the vertical drop of body weight through the skis. It's probably true it will help avoiding the skis involuntarily sliding backwards because of bad grip. At the same time, the people who criticize it 
claim the up and down motions will lead to an unnecessary lifting and lowering of the center of gravity, which will lead to a worse cost of travel. Both Niskanen and Bolshinov's upper bodies are relatively straight and stable. I do believe the unnecessary cost associated with exaggerated up and down movements will be higher than the benefits of getting slightly better grip under your skis through better utilization of the body weight. You will of course have a certain up and down movement, but I don't recommend taking this too far because it will not be economical over long distances. You shouldn't only consider the potential efficiency over shorter durations. You will also have to take into consideration how much the technique will cost over time. An effective technique over shorter segments doesn't help if it's not sustainable. At his best, Niskanen might be the best classic technician in the world. However, you can also notice him not always being technically 100% perfect. When he is in bad shape, there are aspects of his technique less polished and perfect. So even though he's brilliant, he is certainly not that kind of inhuman machine who never does mistakes. Who really is the best classic technician and classic skier on the planet is hard to say for sure. It's certainly very close between him and Bolshinov. Who do you think is better? Let me know in the comments section. To bring everything full circle, why is Ivo Niskanen so good in the classic diagonal? He is simply able to reach a greater distance every single stride than his competitors. To become a faster classic skier, the length of each stroke is the most important detail to improve. I really appreciate all the positive response from you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching the video.